because I've done it. Please don't do something you don't want to do. It's like, what's your favorite drug you've ever done? Yeah, but I don't do drugs. So. I don't either. I still like neither of us have an answer. <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. She clearly loves it. Anyways, I, I do feel like my personality is coming back, guys. It's like, it's like that TikTok sound. It's like... My personality. Yeah, Kylie Jenner. The character development that you had in this past year. Oh, yeah. Might I just say is incredible. Of having, finally getting a TikTok. She used to have a PhD in maturity. Okay. Do you know what that means? Yeah, I do. But like, I, I have to like, say that to you. Yeah. The beginning of TikTok was a lot of dancing and I like, I still don't give a shit about that. But also, I don't I have a lot of... I don't have a repetitive sense of humor in the sense of like, I don't like watching the same thing over and over and think it's funny, mm -hmm. A, and B, I was like, by the end of, before I got to tech, I was like, I spent, my screen time was like 10 hours a day. Like, I just don't need to be spending more time on my phone. And I knew I would get addicted as soon as I got it, like once it got to, that, to the space mm -hmm. that it's in now. But then I just got it anyway, and now my screen time's actually gone down. So I'm at, I averaged six hours and 12 minutes last week, which is so low for me. I like have a problem. I had no idea that you had that bad of a screen time. It's because I'm like a, um, you learn something new every day. It's because I'm like a Twitter scroller, low key. Like I could scroll oh, through wow. Twitter. For that is something I didn't know about It's you. because I like go through like, I like go through rabbit like holes. Reddit stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. you're a Reddit girl? No, but like it's the same concept. Okay, before we um, continue on the conversation, I do want to say I'm starting a new series. Um, and I said drinking with Kinsey. Jessica said cocktails with Kinsey with a K. I think that's cute. Yeah, I mean, you could also do it with a C. It doesn't have to necessarily be K. But like cocktails that's with true. Kinsey sounds better. You know what I mean? I know, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. We can workshop the, the title in the comments below. I'll have friends over. We're going to answer some questions. I also get a lot of questions from you guys to have like normal people on my stuff. Am I normal people or no? Well, by normal, I mean like people who it's like just don't share their entire lives on the internet. I'm normal though. You're normal. I just do it for you. Yeah. I have this theory that people who say that just like want to come on themselves. Because like they're like, we want, I want like a normal account who works at Deloitte and does this and this. And I'm like, look oh, at their bio and it's like, so normal cute. account who works at Deloitte. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but I do want to have people on who can have Dominique on. I've never called Dom Dominique. I literally was about to say who is. You know what family calls her Nikki? <laughs> And it makes sense. It's like, guys, you're probably mind blown right now. I know, I always am. Whenever I hear that, I've known that for years, and whenever I hear, I'm like, who's that? Anyways, um, we're gonna get ranch waters tonight, and I just want to apologize on behalf of myself and the state of Texas because there is a severe shortage of Topo Chicos. Of regular flavored ones. They have like the twisted tangerine, which like I think is gross. So no. at ranch water, I get asked this all the time. It's not a tequila soda because what it truly is is Blanco we have tequila. Blanco tequila. Topo Chico. Lime juice, lime. There you go. That is what a ranch water is. So, a uh, uh, like tequila soda, all, all that stuff, not the same thing. Okay. Same thing. It, it's kind of like a square and a rectangle. Like one can be the other, the other one can't be yep. that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, anyways, it's like a Texas drink. Every bar here knows it. You yeah, go you, you out of state. You can order them somewhere else. You can't. Or you can't. You can't. You can't. Sometimes there are some bars that I'm sure that do it, but like for the most part, you can't order them. Yeah, when I was in Florida, I was like trying, trying to. to. They're the best drink to get at the bars. No, I think they're um, the best. I love them, but like here's the thing about ranch water: if you have had it and you hate it, you probably got a bad one. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, it that's is fair. really easy to make a bad one. I that's will fair. say. That's fair. Um, if you live in Dallas, Happy Sour, I will say, has incredible ranch waters. I will say they used to like serve them in the Topo Chico yeah, bottles like and have them pre-made, and now they have them in this, so I feel a little bit gypped. But anyways, we're gonna start with our drinks. We're gonna be answering some questions. I'm having Jessica on today because she's my co-founder um, of The O'Kind, our new clothing company. I'm wearing the Dallas set right now. So cute, so is Jessica. I forgot you put the pants on. So, yeah. so sorry, you're also included in that. Um, it's available now, launched today. So the Dallas set is available. The tote is available. Please go shop so we don't cry ourselves to sleep. Also, uh, both of our podcasts came out today, yes. Thursday. Um, we answered all sorts of questions, some kind of juicy questions. On Kenzie's podcast, we like, answered some like, yeah, we're taboo questions. Well, we tell you also one, we tell you exactly how much it costs to start, and then two, we I go. It's not really all about the business. It's more of like my um, extreme fear of failure that I've realized that I have. To yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna start by making some drinks. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek. So cute, right? Why? You know what? I would kill to be on Topo Chica's PR list. Wait, is that a thing? Do people get Topo Chica's yeah, PR? Yeah, I'm pretty sure some people do. Really? Why not me? I don't know. It's actually, it's kind of expensive too, so it'd be nice to cut that cost out. Yeah, right? Um, there's a lot of questions about handling a friendship breakup and then also just handling, like, growing apart from friends, especially in college. It's like a case-by-case -case situation. Like, yeah. I don't think there's, like, one blanket answer for that. Like, I think, like, sometimes, like, 
distance is what makes you guys grow apart and that just kind of happens really naturally but like if, if you're like in the still in the same space but like you're just like in different phases of life like again i think those things kind of happen naturally and if it comes up in conversation that your friend's like hey like i feel like we're not you know hanging out as much whatever you can yeah. kind of just be like listen like it's totally not intentional but i just feel like we don't have the same interests right now so like i know we still both like doing x like why don't we make workout classes our thing but when you have a plan it like makes people like less innately like clingy i think because like when you have like a set be like okay we're gonna do like monday wednesdays we have like our pilates in the morning because like that's the one thing we like doing together still but then it's like the rest of your life is still separate and like it then uh, maybe eventually you guys stop doing workout classes together and that really is only like an hour of your day so it's not that much anyway but yeah it's like find a commonality between the two of you and if there isn't one like i feel like you would mutually not want to be friends so like you would think that also it's totally normal like i think i have this issue where i don't like change in relationships so i would like to stay friends with every Every single person that I've ever met in my entire life forever mm -hmm. and that also holds me back big time a lot of people that I hung out with in college we had a lot in common when I was in college but like naturally I you change a lot and you're not the same anymore and like I really don't have anything in common with some of the people that like I love dearly from college yeah, but yeah, we're yeah. Just, like we have different lives now like we just have yeah, grown just apart different. and like it's just kind of how it is um it's just different but I would say this is a really common Topic I think that's even talked about like between like my friends of like you post grad and then you also naturally oftentimes like grow apart from your friends from college right. and that's okay yeah I agree you know? with that so next thing is next we have to rip we're gonna rim these with like um a tahini ish sort of thing it's like a chili powder because I don't have tahini right now I don't know where I left it moving to a new state top three tips to feel confident. Um, some of you may know I moved to Dallas in September of 2021, which I was like almost six months ago. It's kind of crazy. Knew that as well. Obviously, I moved here and I knew Kenzie, so that I didn't know one person, so I didn't really. I wasn't like starting off with nothing. I feel like most people, well, actually, no. Some people do just move. Yeah, especially if, you, if like yeah, post grad you get a new job. Like sometimes it's just um, you know you don't know anybody. Yeah. Um, I would say like to feel was it to feel comfortable. Confident, confident but do it all um i would say solidify your routine like fi don't be afraid like i think it's important to like find your coffee shop find your thing like find your grocery store like those things sound kind of dumb but like those things for me are like i like i love the whole foods that i go to like, i like that i know where everything is like every like monday and thursday when i go to the grocery store like i like that's my place and like i go to la la land after i get a matcha like there is um routine in my life and i like having things like that um that are consistent and i would say like find your workout class and find your things and then obviously you're probably not gonna like meet your well i don't know you can meet friends in the grocery store but even if you're not meeting people there i think it like builds confidence in, like this is your city this is your place because when you like, don't have a thing that's your own like i think it can feel like overwhelming but like once you realize like cities aren't like are only as big as you like make them you know like it doesn't have to be this cr like there's a thousand places i could be going like find your place like find your what you enjoy what you want to be around and then the rest kind of i think will follow from that as for making friends in a new city i don't know i mostly hang out with kenzie and her friends because i'm like but i think that's advice like you make one friend and then you meet them through that you like you just yeah. got lucky because you like my friends yeah that's but, true like, also i think i was just listening to everyone likes my friends are the best that's true tanks oh. just did a podcast and she was talking about good people know good people yeah and so you find one good person like one good co-worker and you're like hey like do you have girlfriends like can we all go out like can i hang out with you guys like kind of in, like I would like this is the thing is like if you like vibe with one of your coworkers, like I don't think it's weird to be if someone came out to me and were like, hey, can no. I hang out with you and your friends? I'd be like, oh my god, great, like another person that you enjoy. Because yeah. you know when you vibe Especially with someone. Especially in post grad because like there's not one person who like doesn't really want new friends. Yes. Yeah, I agree. You with know, that. and like, like especially like if you guys are getting along well, like why would they not want to hang out with you? Yeah. Okay, these look so cute, guys. They look really good. Let me get a cute little pick really quick. Um I love this for us. Insert yourself, especially like, and again, like you'll know if you vibe with someone. So like, if yes. you feel like you're not vibing, don't do that. But like, well, the other thing too, like when I moved to LA, it's like yes, I did know a lot of people, but like the people that I ended up hanging out with were not the people I knew when I originally moved. And I would meet, so I met like probably, I met so many different people before really finding like my group there. Yeah. And I think you meet one person and then you meet another person through them and then you meet another person through yeah. them and then like naturally you just keep going and going and then eventually you're gonna find your group of people. Someone told me this too and this is specifically about LA and I actually couldn't agree more. And I think maybe times are different for people but you know, first meet you're moving somewhere 
forgot to like LA to a place you like really I like wanted to move to mm -hmm. is your honeymoon year. Mm -hmm. So you're like doing all the things for the first time. Second year you hate it because you're like, what am I doing? And yeah. the newness has worn off. Third year is when you've like found your people and made it your home. Okay. And I think that's a lot of people's like phases of anything new. So it's important to keep in mind. That's you know? Not fair. Yeah. We did cheers. Cheers to the Okai, please buy. We you. didn't make eye contact and I'm not having seven years of bad sex because of you. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um also so many questions about how to make friends in new cities. Um, join my Geneva chat. I'm not kidding. People actually make friends there. How often do we meet people who met in the Geneva chat? I mean people who met in Geneva chat. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's not weird. Join the Geneva chat. I added so many new cities yesterday. Oh, yeah, it's definitely not weird. No, it's not weird at all. And there's so many cities. Like, join it. It's a, basically a big group chat. We have one home and then a bunch of different rooms of girls in different cities. You guys need to join it and you will make friends. You have something in common, which is me. But like more than that, if you follow me, we probably have something in common. Oh yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. So it's like stuff, everyone yeah. has something in common. Yeah, and everyone we've met is so cool. Yes, I've, yes, so cool. I agree. I hype my friends up to chase their dreams, but I don't give the same energy to myself. Help. Um. Okay. Well, I think that that's maybe like a little bit of a like a deeper thing than just like you're not hyping yourself up because like you want like you want to have like you want to be secure like in yourself and like view yourself the way you view your friends like if you think your friends like deserve that sort of hype like if you're not giving it to yourself it's probably because like subconsciously you don't think that you deserve it so i think that something that i do something i practice daily is affirmations it sounds so stupid and Can you give like three affirmations yeah i was gonna say like um i say like i'm like i'm worthy of like love and compassion from other people like i am smart and i am um love and i have 10 that i like read and i write them down every single day because i like I struggle really badly with anxiety and I like having things that, that's like a very grounding um, technique for me and something that like, just works really well. So I will do that in the morning. I write them down in my journal. I write the same 10 down, 10 affirmations and I have 10 manifestations that I write down. Um, but you want to like validate yourself and I think that like, because I struggle with this too, like, I'm so quick to hype other people up. Like my friends, my sisters, like I'm literally their biggest cheerleader, but there are times where I'm like, I'm not giving myself the same energy. So I feel you, but like you have to, it sounds cheesy, like you have to like, make it a really like a point to like look at yourself and be like and say all those nice things that you would say to someone else to yourself because even if you don't believe them at first like you eventually will like it just becomes practice like it like the more you say it out loud like the more you feel it how to be the ultimate breadwinning housewife it's my friend's birthday coming up and i wanted to make her a breadwinning housewife kit um obviously breadwinning housewife merch that's great what a nice friend <laughs> i know what a nice friend someone makes me a breadwinning housewife that is such a good idea i'm trying to think okay like it depends if she's a drinker or like likes to host i think the best thing you can do is get like a cute mixer a cute barware oh you know what dom actually got me these for christmas like last year oh cute i mean they are so incredible. What are they? Five two. I love the five two. Is that fifty two or five two? Uh, yeah. Food fifty two. That's Target. Five two. Oh, just this kidding. is Nordstrom. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I don't know why I'm blanking on this. Anyways, I love these though. Like they're, they're really nice. incredible oven mitts or a cute like serving board. You have to think yeah. about what they're gonna be using when they're serving. But ultimately, obviously, breadwinning house and merch. Yeah. A lot of stuff is sold out. We restocked the pink crew, but um, we have like the hats and like certain things from certain vendors. How to make friends who are truly rooting for you. You know what I'm thinking about this? I would have always said that I have friends who are really supportive and I think online I've had friends who are incredibly supportive, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it's just that like my friends now are the most supportive people in the entire world. Yeah. Like literally flying out to my New York show. Yeah. I would say maybe between like at a certain age, yeah. you know, that yeah, I, I yeah. wouldn't have felt that way. Yeah. Um, but I think how to make friends who are truly rooting for you. Dom and I recorded with a friendship coach once, mm -hmm. and it was so interesting. She said there was some study, and of the top qualities that a good friend can have, it's self-confidence, like the number one. Yeah. Which is so interesting, but also so true because that solves all of like clinginess problems, all of yeah. church order like, problems. Yeah. Secure. Yes, pettiness, drama, right. jealousy, and I think everyone has like some sort of jealousy to an extent, but like. It's depends on how you act on it and like i don't yeah. think that like i wouldn't say i'm an incredibly jealous person i say that because i recorded with this girl who's talking about how like we demonize the emotion of jealousy and then yeah. i was like she actually won me over with the argument mm -hmm. i think you just have to find people who are secure in themselves yeah i think also like you have like that's it's like people say this all the time like you have to be the type of friend you want to yeah. have like you can't like expect your friends to be acting some type of way when you're not acting that type of way and i think also like some things aren't as like blatant like you would realize when you, like you didn't have supportive friends yeah right like your friends are probably more supportive than you think i guess is what i'm trying to say like once you once those people, types of people aren't around you'd be like wow i really didn't have such supportive friends and you kind of have to like count the little things in life yeah. because support doesn't necessarily mean like like texting you all the time i'm so proud of you it's like showing up when you like 
like showing up to someone's house and having a coffee like remembering things about them like and also just remembering that like that goes to like love languages yeah. like some people That's show so things true. differently so and be talk to your friends about it if you feel like your friends yeah. are being supportive just be like hey like i had this thing it really hurt like i had this event or i had this really cool thing i got this promotion and i really i told you guys that i really feel like you weren't like like let's go celebrate with drinks like it doesn't have to be something like that but be like i wanted some sort of response and i didn't get one and that really hurt my feelings like i feel like if the roles were reversed and one of you guys said that to me i would have responded in x sort mm -hmm. of way I just think communication like is just the key to like literally everything I think that like being able, like I'm an incredibly blunt, blunt person and I think that I'm like and maybe like a little bit too vocal about the way that I feel but I would rather be more vocal about the way that I feel than not vocal enough yeah. because like when I like if someone someone does something that like rubs me the wrong way or whatever like I would let them know just because like I don't think it's pot like then you're just stewing in like some sort of emotion about it and you don't want to like stew at your friends but they're not supportive they don't like me like if you just tell them like oh my god I'm so sorry that obviously wasn't our intention like yeah like let's go do something let's go celebrate or like next time something like this happens Will, will be better like I just think that you ought to communicate that because maybe they just have no idea you know like maybe they just don't know that that's how you're feeling yeah because people, are, people aren't mind readers like it's 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 unfortunately but. yeah and like I know everyone we wish that people were but and it's kind of hard to talk about your feelings and that seems like an awkward thing to bring up but sooner that then stew would not and be mad at your friends or something I make sure you're also celebrating your friends like if you want that you need to give that too so if you know anything about the Enneagram I'm a three wing too so I am the achiever and the supporter so I want to overachieve and then I want to help all my friends overachieve mm -hmm. what I've noticed with myself though is that I definitely like really believe in myself and I'm like I can do it and I definitely have confidence to go after things obviously like I've I've done stuff However, I do, I have some like scarcity mindset that I've noticed of like, oh, well, like they can do that, but like I couldn't do yeah, that. Like, no, like there's not room for you. The, yeah, there's not room for me. And like I'm more supportive or I'm like, oh, my friends could do that, but like I couldn't do that. Right, right, right. When also like actually just like statistic, like it numbers wise, sense. it yeah. doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. But like, I definitely think that like other people can do it. And for whatever reason, I'm either not deserving or it's just not going to happen in my life or because I've had harder things happen. They're just going to continue to happen. And they're not going to happen to other people and, like things like that. So, um, yeah, my, my answer is therapy, but <laughs> I think that specifically is a confidence thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, and a, like self-worth thing. Like you have to believe that you were deserving. I never go on dates slash talk to guys. I feel like I'm not doing my twenties right. Welcome to the club. <laughs> I don't do that either. To yeah. be clear. Like I don't do that either. It's just, it's rough out here. It, okay. I don't know if you're saying like you, like you don't want to be. And cause I think what she said was like, I feel like I'm doing my twenties wrong. So like, if you don't want to, please don't do something you don't want to do. Like no matter like what you feel like is right or wrong. Like I feel this way. I feel, yeah, like, I say this to you all the time. Like, I yeah. feel like I'm wrong. Or, like, everyone is, like, thinks it's, like, I'm so weird because I just... You don't want to. But I've just done it. Like, and it's not yeah. that I'd never do it again, but I'm, like, I just see how much happier I am personally yeah. not dating someone. And granted, like, obviously I'm not dating the right people, but, like, I definitely feel, yeah, like, that type of way. Like, I feel like I'm, like, I definitely feel like I'm the weird one. Yeah, yeah, and I think that like it's just because of culture, like dating culture, hookup culture is like just huge right now. And yeah. I, I appreciate the. I think for a while, like it was kind of taboo for girls to talk about like hookup and dating like culture around or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I think like TikTok and stuff, like a lot in social media in general, has like, normalized it, which it should be normalized. But now it's kind of like leaning in the direction of like if hookup culture that, is weird. is the yeah. only way to do it, and that's also not true. Or like. Dating, like you don't like you don't have to do anything you don't want to do, and I think that like find things that you enjoy doing, and like you just have to be like secure in those decisions. I feel like self confidence and security is just kind of like the key to like most of these things because when you feel uncertain about like be like the way you're behaving or feelings that you have, it's probably just because you're not confident in your decisions. And like you, mm -hmm. if something's making you feel good, like if you feel good in the space that you're in, don't change that because like the like culture like because culture is telling you to do something different this is probably the one thing that i like second guess about myself really say, yeah because it's the thing yeah. that i think about the most i'm like am i wrong like because mm -hmm. i don't like and i was talking to john about this the other day it's like it's i know i don't like hookup culture because i've done it like it's just not okay. but like i don't dislike hookup culture as a whole i don't like it myself for my yeah but like for everyone else i don't care but I do feel weird, like, I just because I'm not really, like, partaking in it. Right, right, right. And, like, that's definitely, like, not the normal thing. But then I'm, like, I, I always think about with myself when I'm, like, spiraling in this. Like, if a friend came to me and yeah. said this, I would be, like, then just don't do it. Who cares? Yeah. Like, I would be, like, that's so not a big deal. Yeah. At all. But um, I feel that way sometimes, too. But I just don't think that 
I don't know. I think you just have to like really do what you want to do. Yeah, I think it's, the, uh, it's a, like a good point to say like, what yeah. would you say to your friend who would say the same thing to you? And you'd be like, why do you give a fuck about what everyone else thinks? Also, easier said than done. Like I totally get that. Yes, and it's not like I'm saying like, oh my god, I think it's horrible. Uh, the reason I know I don't like it for myself is because I've done it. Like right. it's not like I'm not against it at all. It's not. It's just like yeah, like do your thing. For me, I just don't like it. Like I don't know. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Just like you have to be secure in whatever decision you make, and whatever yeah. decision you make should make you feel happy. And, and I would say this is like the probably the least secure in my life, I would say. Yeah. It was my, not my decision, but like, I just know that it's like talking about it. So bothers me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You know people are like, why isn't she yes. doing that? Yeah. yeah. I feel that. I made this video where I like turned Dom into a Texan mm -hmm. and they want me to recreate it with you. But the thing is, you already like country music. Like you like a lot yeah. of things. Yeah. I would just have to take you, I would have to do like simple life with you. Like you need to go on a farm and like clean or something. I don't know what So we'll get on to that. Being more confident in meeting men. So this isn't something that I am, that I feel like someone about. sent me a tip. It's like, I don't really, oh, I think again, like, I think all this is just like general security you have to have because like, yeah. when you like, like I think about what well, they're probably nervous to meet you. Like, yeah, I would refer to tanks reverse box theory. Um, it shouldn't be about, you know, how yeah. do you feel about them or how do they feel about you? How do you feel about them? Yeah, that's true. Stop giving men so much power. Like they have enough power in this world. They don't need you to give them more. That's very true. Like it's it's just not that easier said than done. Also, like I, I'm not saying it. Like I I am quick to practice, but that's just what we have to keep reminding ourselves. Like we're hot shit. Like all yeah. of us collectively as women, like we're badasses. Like we like deserve to be in the positions that we're in. And if you're like fully confident in that about yourself, or like at least like fake it till you make it. You know, if you're not feeling that, like walk into a situation where you're like, even if I don't tr totally believe this to be true, like I'm pretending that it is. And I think like then you just kind of like you're lucky. It's like makes it easier to walk in that. But that would be my tips. How to deal with constant final interview rejections as a soon to be graduate. Oh, <laughs> I can't tell you guys how many interviews I've gone on in the past six months and I still don't have a job and I have a bachelor's degree. I'm fully qualified. You guys, it's just, it's not us, it's them. It's the market, it's the job situation right now. It's, I promise it's probably not you. And I would say like, I'm finding peace in the fact that people around me are still, you know, being like you, like it, the good things coming, mm -hmm. you know, like, but also you just, it's really, it's not you. Like the situations are like, I can't even tell you the places I've got projected from. Like, it's not you. Postcard life is so hard in so many spaces, but I think like jobs, it's like, it feels scary because you're like, it's your first like, thing that's like yours in adulthood like yeah and so it, getting rejected or like it just it's a huge 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 ego bruise because it's like this is your first and it's kind of like yours and then it's like no 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 and it hurts really bad and i think it's just kind of like you just have to realize like think about how many people are graduating right now and are applying for the same jobs as you it's so not yeah. about you as a person or your personality or your qualifications like it's just, and also like i hate to say this but like jobs right now are like 99 percent of just like it's networking and people that you know and even then like i'm in spaces where i'm like i like my dad works in business and so like i've gotten connects and had interviews and i'm still getting rejected and it's like so there's really like it is it's just it's such a numbers game and a lot of companies are downsizing a lot of companies like had to take like people have to take major pay cuts like a lot of stuff is still going on post covid that companies are just kind of like getting their footing again so i think that like don't take it personally and also like make sure that you're like just like being yourself because like the the best like the thing that i like find peace in is like if they don't like me like that just sucks well it doesn't even have to be yeah i mean like they're lost but it doesn't yeah. even have to be that they don't like you like i have two things to say about this the first being when i think about rejection like rejection is obviously never fun but you think about it in the way of like let's say you are auditioning for a play mm -hmm. all right it doesn't matter how talented you are and how good you are let's say they're looking for a five foot four girl with pale skin and dark hair and yeah. they're looking for like a whatever they're looking for like a specific type to fill a specific role right not that like jobs are looking for like appearances uh -huh. but like sometimes they are looking for the most random thing that someone just fits into yeah. better and like they just fit into it like the business culture better or whatever it doesn't mean right. that they're better or worse than you it's just like you could be not what they're looking for it doesn't mean that you're not qualified you're not right. good enough none of that the other thing I will say, obviously, like, I'm not, I haven't had to apply for jobs really, like, ever since graduating, obviously. But as far as rejection goes, there is not one thing that I have been rejected from, whether it's a career opportunity, um, something that I've lost business-wise, 
a, some, a breakup. Like there's not one thing that has to do with rejection that I've lost that I still wish I had now or that I ever, there, every single time I've been rejected, there has come a moment where I'm like, thank, thank God, God I was rejected. And I live by that now. So like when I don't get something that I want in current day, I just think I know that moment will come and it helps me so That's much. It helps a lot of breakups too, just yeah. thinking like, I know one day I'll be so grateful for this. Um, it helps a ton. How to deal with changing, like, there's a lot of questions about, like, changing faith and, like, navigating faith changes in your 20s. But I feel like the first episode that we recorded for my podcast, we kind of went into this about a little. I think we, I don't know if we so much talked about it. I feel like we thought we went in a lot more than we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I would say, like, my therapist and I talk about this a lot because I have kind of this thing where I'm, like, especially for me, like, with Christianity, I felt like I lived in such a black and white space for so mm -hmm. long. And... Like, I felt like if I wasn't believing everything, I was believing nothing. And that was because that was what was told to me, which, like, it, in fact, is not, like, biblically true. Yeah. And so, like, for me, it's just kind of, like, what are my pillars? Like, what are, these, what are the things that I, like, I know that I believe to be true? And, like, I just, I try to, like, focus on that instead of, like, what, what do I not agree with anymore? And I think that that's, like, a hard thing to do. But it's, like, okay, like, for me, it's, like, Jesus. Like that, that my belief in like yeah. Jesus dying on the cross hasn't changed, right? Like that's still a pillar for me. And like all identifying what I still actually believe to be true and like building my faith around that. Because like the reality of the situation is like your faith is your faith. Like it's nobody else's faith. And you kind of have to walk in it like the way that you feel the most comfortable and the most at peace. And so like if there are things that like you've attached to your faith that you like no longer agree with, like it is okay to discard those. Like for me, like there are so many like small things that I like picked up along the way that I just don't agree with anymore. And for me, I was like, okay, but if I don't believe that to be true, then like, I'm not a Christian anymore. And that's just not true. Like, don't yeah. let people tell you that like, you have to believe a certain thing or align with a certain belief system, political party, whatever it is, like your faith, like is actually just your faith. It is nobody else's. And just like, try to like, focus on like what what are your core values like what do you believe to be true still and i feel like build your relationship with your faith around that that's what yeah. helped me i think when people ask these questions too they're talking a lot more about church than they ever are about their like faith that's and belief true. systems because i think i say that too and i'm like i don't necessarily i think my faith has been detrimentally hurt by the church the church I yeah know. which like i also there's been great things that have come from that too like i'm whatever I, I say this every single time mm -hmm. but I, that's reality of most of the people that even w exist at yeah. this point if you've ever been a part of a church or anything like that so um i don't know like i'm like, talking to dom about this on facetime like, until really late last night and i think it's just like you figuring it out on your own but for me the hardest part was taking a step back because i was so like almost brainwashed into thinking like I have to be asked or whatever a certain way because I know if I take a break or I take a step back that these people are going to be talking about me yeah. and these people like I promise you right now this video is being sent around like yeah and we say that all the time and it's like I don't live in this like bubble of like hating anyone or hating anything or being yeah. angry or anything like that so it's much like, energy to hate yeah like I don't feel that way I, don't, I just I don't, have yeah. recognized really unhealthy things for me that were not good for me in an experience that I was in and having to like take a step back and heal yeah. and then eventually I'm sure I'll kind of get back on track but like I say this all the time candidly I have no idea where I'm at like I'm very all over the place I'm very like I just know yeah. I don't want to be a part of this right now um but I think for me the biggest the hardest part was letting myself actually change my mind and take a step back yeah and be like I don't know if this is exactly for me and mm -hmm. also I feel like it was just, it was really scary to be like something that I feel like I've built my life on the past and two built years. built your life around. And built my life around and I was told I needed to do and be and whatever. It was really scary to take a step back and I feel like oftentimes we talk about this all the time, like you're taught the only way to get community is in there. They, they like tell you this. Yeah. Um, and like I've never had better community than I have right now and yeah. it has absolutely nothing to do with church. In fact, like most people that I know are probably on the same, are on the same page as us. Yeah, I would so, yeah, I think it's also hard when you, I said this about my home church too, like when I was younger, like it's, it was so hard for me to like quote unquote leave because I know how they talked about yes, people that left. Because we Cause heard once it. Once you're in so, because I was in so deep, I was in the most, you know, innermost circle yeah. or whatever, which is like a whole other issue, but 
um, you hear the way they talk, people like, oh, they've fallen off the path, or yeah. they've, you know, they've walked away from their faith, the verbiage they use and the way that they describe people who no longer subscribe to their personal belief system, they, like, have all of the, they're, like, ostracized, and they're, like, oh, well, they're not here anymore, and it's, like, just because somebody doesn't believe what you believe to be true anymore doesn't mean you get to, like, speak about them like that, but I think that's why yeah. it, it's so much harder to leave, because you're, like, I know exactly what they're saying about me. Yeah. And, like, for me, too, in our podcast episode came out, like, I said that, I know people are talking about me, and... I literally got feedback that they, that was exact. Someone called like yeah. said I was going off the rails. Like there was so much like and it was I was validated in that, but also like mm -hmm. I don't care anymore. Cause like why do you want to, you know, receive feedback from people that you don't agree with anymore? Yeah. Like their opinions like, should be. You don't want to advise from people that you don't want to be. Yeah, because like if your life you don't want to like live your life like them, like you shouldn't want to receive feedback positive or negative from them. Yeah, and I think like and that's hard to, uh, that's, I'm not saying that like it's easy. Like, it still hurts when people say those things. Like I acknowledge yeah. that. It, it hurts your feelings for sure. But just like a reassurance for yourself is like, you don't want to be like them, right? Like why do you, I, you're calling me off the rails. Like I hope I'm off the rails to you. Like I hope my life doesn't look like yours anymore. And I think too, like people, especially in the church are like so terrified of people leaving and mm -hmm. so terrified of people taking a break or taking a step back or whatever. Yeah. And I recorded an episode with Jessa Hastings. There's two of them and there's the best episodes. They're such good episodes. They're so good. Um, yeah. And she was talking about, like, she's like, listen, I took a big, and she also is a good Instagram follow if you guys are dealing with and struggling with any of this. And again, I say this, like, it's, I, when I say this stuff too, I'm like, I could change my mind in a year. I could change my mind in six months. I yeah. could change my mind in like, whatever. I'm like, I was listening to stuff this week that I was like, maybe I can come back. Like, it, you just, things change, right? Mm -hmm. But she was talking about how like, she took a step back from her, um, her faith in church or whatever around my age mm -hmm. for like two or three years. And yeah. she's like, it's the best thing I ever did for myself and my faith. So like, I don't know, I think, Obviously, like faith in general is like a polarizing topic, and it's not. We couldn't be less polarizing with Christianity, I think, like at all. I think you should just, yeah, like us too. I mean, like, our yeah, I'm saying, like, I think like it's that. just, I think it's just too personal to like make polarizing statements in general. Yeah, I agree, but it's just, it is definitely a really hard thing. I will say, I was so terrified of making that change in my life oh my for God. so long, and it's crazy. Like, I think about that all the time. How I'm in age totally different space now and so much more confident and feeling so much better about my life and myself and everything right. about it yeah so i will say it does get easier like i i would say for myself i found it to get easier oh, same with me like i think also like you have to like because i think for someone like i was kind of like walking through emotions and things that i didn't agree with and you'll find so much freedom and yes. being like this is actually what i want to be doing and i was just literally was just saying this to kenzie today i am the happiest i've ever been in my life i'm pursuing the things that i've wanted to pursue for so long like i have such great friends like my relationships with people that i don't even live near have never been better like so many aspects of my life are the best that they've ever been and like i think a lot of that has to do with like me shedding things that just like weren't serving me anymore which can apply you can apply that to anything anything yeah like, you like you shouldn't be like allowing yourself to be like crippled by beliefs or things or people that like aren't serving you anymore and like you have to be putting yourself first in those sorts of situations like i fully believe that like i think there are so many aspects of life in which like you have to be selfish yeah and if you're in a a group or a setting that's telling you like oh they're not gonna understand you or they're not gonna get it or they're not like that is toxic toxic that's actually like i'm not gonna go as far to say like these things are cults at all but i am saying that is a cult mentality totally it's and all or nothing it's, it's all like, or nothing and like we're right in there and group think and like all these things and like that is not healthy yeah. So I would just keep that in mind. Um, but a lot of like, I had to have like a lot of self-compassion throughout the oh, whole thing same. because it was crazy how like you can totally not agree with something, mm -hmm. but you still are beating yourself up for it. Like, yeah, it's like, I would never think that of someone else, but all yeah. of a sudden I'm a problem. And I think a lot yeah. of it goes to like, you hear people talk about people. Yeah. That's a huge thing. Like, I think it's like, hard. Church is a lot of ne like negative talk within it that like isn't publicized, obviously. And the way they speak about people that are outside their walls, obviously, or inside their walls, makes you feel I think like inside is worse. Yeah. yeah, that's probably true. Like, I honestly wish, like, I, I think if I ever go back, I will stay, like, I will keep a very big distance. Yes, yeah. cowboy boots that aren't too expensive. Miranda Lambert's line. Um, yeah, you really need some. You need to get Tacovas. I need Tacovas. Oh, okay. Last one. This one's crazy. Went on a few dates with a co-worker and then he ghosted. What do I do when I see him? <laughs> well, like, I don't know, what do you First do? First of all, fuck that guy, that's so mean. That's actually like so disrespectful. People, sorry, people who ghost like, okay, one date, whatever. 
if you go on more than one date with somebody and they ghost you, like, that's really fucked up. I'm really sorry. Like, people, some, be, apparently, like, Gen Z is, like, pro-ghosting to some degree. Yeah, people with pro-ghosting. Not, not me. Not me. I think that's mean. You guys I think one date, mean. whatever, but past that. Yeah, one date is totally not the yeah. end of the deal. After one date, no thank you. Um, what do you say, bro? I'm so sorry. Honestly. Jenny doesn't exist. No, I, no, I don't even think that. I think just be totally normal. Like, oh, okay. Because if you show that you're bothered, it's so yeah, much yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's why when you ever, like, okay, this is a very good, like, life tip. Right. If you ever run in to, and, like, every guy will tell you this. This is, like, the one piece of advice that's consistent throughout, without guys. Yeah. With guys. If you ever run into your ex, mm -hmm. or run into your, like, your ex's new girlfriend, or run into, like, whatever. Yeah, be be cool. Uh, be incredibly nice and kind. Like, if you are the person, like, it's a little bit embarrassing if you're the person, like, causing a scene, but also, like, they're gonna just be like, well, the fuck, she doesn't care. Yeah. Because if you're nice, like, yeah. you know. Unbo be an unbothered queen. Yeah. Like, you just, like, and, and that probably sucks. And I'm, it, I will say it, it's easier yeah. said than done because I am an unbothered person. Yeah. So, like, I'm just, like, I'm petty. Like, I, it's not that I'm bothered. Like, I wanna make you feel uncomfortable, but also, like, in a work environment, that's probably not the best thing to be yeah. doing. So, like, it'd be one thing if you're, like, out at the bars, but, like, if you're, yeah, if you're gonna have to be, like, in the same workspace, I don't know how big your company is, but, like, um, yeah, if you're gonna be running into them, just like be normal and honestly, like it just yeah, it just shows that you're a bigger person. And honestly, like it probably makes him think like, oh, she's like she's not even thinking. I mean, she's already moved on. She's done. Yeah, she doesn't even give a fuck. Yeah. So like, be be that girl. Lord Elizabeth just got her package. She talks to me. Okay. Oh, did any of your friends get dates from the um, Dallas matchmaking TikTok? Not me. Um. So like, no. some things have happened. Yeah, it's definitely some things have happened. Well, I'll tell you some things. Some things have happened. Um, I might bring it back though. I like really was going strong for I a bit, a, I and I became a little bit of a TikTok star this week. I need a date, so. Okay, I'll get back on that. It's hard on TikTok because like random people. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please go shop the Okai and let me know if you guys like this series. It really just feels like you're in my kitchen. These are the things that we talk about, so. That's true. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll have the Okai linked below. I'll have Jessica linked below, her podcast, all that. I went on it today, so you guys can go listen. Cheers. Like New York is just you're there and someone's like, Oh, you wanna hop on the pod tomorrow? And it's like there's the you're opportunities. Just in the city with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay in the flow. No, I feel and then you had a recent life change. I had an I had like Big a, one. I had a, a yeah, I did have a recent life change. It was really unexpected. I feel like everyone's like, Oh my gosh, you moved in with your boyfriend. Like, had you guys been like talking about it, planning it, like blah blah. No. <laughs> no. 